welcome to the first got safety webinar of 2018 i am what i was gonna say the first webinar the got safety and eap webinar yes for 2018 yes. i'm rick roman and My, michael Kraut. we are today going to be talking to you about some osha updates basically what's been going on here recently and what you can look forward to in the upcoming year yep. to help you guys stay compliant and uh, out of trouble with the state um, quickly we'll go over our agenda if we could here yep, yep. Uh, we're going to be talking about silica laws, some new silica laws that just went into effect recently. Also, the N95 dust masks, 300 logs. Uh, there's been an OSHA penalty increase that has taken effect in California that we'll be talking about. And also the upcoming indoor heat illness prevention plan. But before we get to the ugly, Michael, uh, the let's ugly, talk about the good. You know, the ugly is these updates, and we're going to help you understand that. But what we're doing is we're giving away a free Green Mountain Grill smoker. I do love smoked meat, so you'll have to bear with us as we give this out. If you answer the question at the end of the webinar, that will have to do with what we're talking about today. I will ship you your very own Green Mountain Grill smoker with a bag of pellets that you can change your life for, for Valentine's Day. Absolutely, and we'll get this out to you right quick, and you'll be ready to go. Rick, what is the first thing on our agenda again? In my friend the first thing we're talking about is the respirable crystalline silica that's a tongue twister there rick that is a tongue twister if you try to say it fast it's darn near impossible yeah, we've so tried that earlier today and it was <laughs> darn near impossible let me tell you so uh there was a new standard that came out uh, as of september 23rd last year um, across the country all the state programs everybody has this and basically that you have to have this program that requires employers to limit the worker exposure to the respirable crystalline silica and uh, they have to take other steps to protect their workers so if you're wondering what the heck the respirable crystalline silica even is it's a common mineral that's found in construction materials such as sand stone concrete brick and mortar and when workers grind, drill, or crush materials that contain this stuff, it basically puts particulates into the air that can get into your lungs and, and cause cancer and things like that and disease. So what OSHA's done is they've added this new statute that the programs have to talk about this. And so what we've gone through is we've gone through all our client base to make sure that if they are in the construction industry or in an industry that has to do with this, we've automatically put that silica dust in your program. So that's the good news. The hard thing for us to do is it's difficult for us to know everybody, all th thousands of clients we have to know everybody of where they're at. So if you are somebody who you may not be typically thought of as somebody with this problem, but you know you run across this, you're going to give us a call. Now, our inspectors, as they go out to service your facilities, if you are using some of the on-site services, they're going to pick up on this and ask this of this. So if this does slip through your fingers, we're going to be able to pick it up. But the reality of it is we've already done the work to be able to add this to the books already. If you just have a question, you can call our office at any time and they'll let you know if it's in there or not. And if you do need it, great. And if not, we can work that out with you. We wanted to tell you about the update. And yes. in a second, we've already taking care of the problem knowing it was there it's part of the service that you have but we just want to make sure because like michael said there might be some of you who might be working in a weird industry that right. comes across it but might not have been the typical guy and what if they're one of the few people michael that we have invited that maybe that they don't have those programs with us yep yep some of the people didn't buy the programs in the beginning was the wrong choice and so what the idea is you're going to need this update so just contact our office and we can give you and help you get up to speed with that but remember it's silica dust so concrete a dust of some kind that's in the the concrete bags cutting of the concrete and a few other things you can look at the sds sheets of the material that you have that'll say if there's silica in there this can be a problem for the employees down the road it's nothing that happens quickly but those problems that do happen down the road can be some of the biggest problems that you have so remember we've already taken the of the problem when it comes to the writing of the programs and we believe we've got everybody but this is a safe bet for you to check yourself so as my people go out and do that on-site service they'll be checking themselves right rick exactly that way you make sure that you're all up to date there right so uh let's move on to the next thing here that has come about and we're talking about the n95 masks n95 n95 so if you look at the picture in the slide there you'll see a picture of a guy in the middle there and he's just wearing your common uh, what you would call like a nuisance mask yep, or a comfort yep. mask. And uh, now the one on the left looks very similar to it, but it is actually considered basically the same as the one on the right, which is a 
respirator. Yes. And so what, what's really, what what's the change that we've seen that has come about with this, that, that is having us bring this about here today in, in the webinar? I want you to know that I do a couple things for work that, that are in, important for you to know. First, I, I track every OSHA citation in the country. I, I track this to be able to see what people are citing for, what district offices they're citing for, so that when I tell you this factor that we're seeing trends in certain ways, it is not just based on our, on our client group. It's based on a country or a state of California item, depending on the problem. So let me address this item specifically to California. The N95 is being cited more and more and more. Now, in the past, we've always looked at these dust masks as part of the nuisance dust masks. And when I tell you that I've had many OSHA inspectors tell me that the N95, no big deal, it's just a nuisance dust mask, they weren't connecting it in that way, they were interpreting the law different. But I am seeing trends over the last few months of multiple district offices in the state of California citing for this issue. And what they're saying is that this requires a respiratory protection program, a medical evaluation, and a fit and smell test if they're going to use an N95. Respirator. What we found is our clients, a lot of them weren't even aware they were using it. They just thought it looked great and they put it into play. Now, the picture of the N95 that we have, there is a little round thing on the front. That is not a filtration device. That is an air release valve so that when you breathe out, because the mask is so much denser and thicker, when you breathe out, the air comes easily through that release valve, and then obviously they breathe and it comes through. And that restriction, that heavier restriction of the airflow is what makes this respirator hit that higher level of enforcement. So... What you're going to do after this, this webinar is you're going to go in your shop and see if you have N95 dust masks. If you do, respiratory protection program, and if you've already bought the documentation from us, this will be a program we can add at no charge. And so don't worry about this. It's not an upsell of any kind, but you need to make sure you don't have it. Now, if you do have the N95 respirators, the second thing we're going to do is to verify that the SDS sheet that you have that's causing your guys to wear these because they're trying to deal with a chemical of some kind, that it requires an N95 respirator. We need to figure out what that is. Yes. When our inspectors are out, they can help you go through this. The logic of it is we need to verify even if you need one. We could get one one, one of the nuisance dust masks and get where right. and go through that. So if you're just trying to keep some, some particulates that are floating through the air that are right. not necessarily hazardous, but just as part of a comfort right. that you're using the N95s, the better option would sure. be just to use a regular nuisance mask. And I agree with Rick on that. And watch out for the terminology volunteer. Volunteer. Don't worry about the volunteer. If you got the N95, we got to go the full gamut, the respiratory, the medical, and the fit. So if you got to do that, we'll go to that extent. But if you don't require it and all you can do is a the nuisance dust mask, let's just go with the nuisance, the, the nuisance dust mask. It'll solve all the problems. Exactly. But just kind of take a look out there. Some of us bought those dust masks with the mindset that uh, they would be a little bit better for us. Right. But I will tell you, it is not uncommon for the interpretation of OSHA law to change over periods of times, depending on what the environment is in the system. This is one that is being cited and the environment is changing and we're giving you a heads up on that. All right, so we will move on to the next topic, Michael. It is that season. Uh, I love this season, Rick, the beginning of the year. We get to start things over, do some great things it and is. also, 300 logs. 300 logs. So starting tomorrow, if you are in California and yes. a few other states where you have to uh, still not report electronically, you have to get your 300 logs posted. Uh, you should see on the slide there where it's been put up in a conspicuous place so your employees can see it. And you need to make sure that you go get those up and they have to stay up until... April 30th, my birthday, and by coincidental, Rick Roman's wife's birthday. Me and Rick's, Rick Roman's wife share the same birthday. Well, we're very close. <laughs> so aside from that, more importantly for you, you just need to make sure that you have your OSHA logs up. Um, we have been getting a lot of calls over the months, and especially now that the season is upon us, uh, about the electronic reporting, Michael. Yes. And with the electronic reporting that came out as uh, last year on the federal, and, and originally there were dates to uh, have it come into play in California and yes. the other states, keeps getting pushed back. What's going on with that? Some of the states have adopted and some of them haven't. We have a list of the states that have not adopted it because it is a much lower list. If your state has adopted or you don't see it on the list that we're about to read to you, the reality of it is you're just going to go online and figure out what that is and do it. It's very easy. But the states that have not adopted are 
We've got the slide up showing that this, uh, the states that have not adopted the electronic reporting are California, mm -hmm. Maryland, Minnesota, South Carolina, Utah, Washington, and Wyoming. So if you're in one of those states, right now it's not even on the horizon as to when this is going to get implemented they keep changing the date they do and so they will get there and when they do get there we are hoping to create a module that it can help you guys in those states uh report that through your system very very nicely and so yes we'll be on the god on, safety it will be on the god safety platform and it, and it should be very nice but just know that that if you're in california or any of the other states we've named that that, that re requirement is you're going to stick with the 300 log posted yes. on the wall it doesn't necessarily have to be by your time clock could be in the break room but you've got to put it where the employees can see it between february 1st and april 30th which Correct. is your birthday can i get an amen gentlemen Amen. Very yes. excited group in here. Very so excited. anyway, uh, yeah, so make sure that you get that taken care of. So just know in California, it's just not going on yet. We're getting calls all the time about doing that reporting. They haven't even told us how that's going to come into play yet. Correct. We'll let you know as soon as we find out. So moving on. This is another one that is uh, come into effect in California. Uh, it's been about two years ago almost we're coming up on when we did a webinar on the penalty increases on the Fed OSHA side where for the first time which had been in 26 years where they made adjustments for inflations and basically had a 78 percent increase on what the maximum of penalties could be and uh, we knew at that time that it was going to be coming to California soon yes we and, did and uh, so you know, so they have that big increase, and then every year they are thereafter, based on the consumer price index. Oh, yes, index, the consumer price index. I had a price they, spasm there right they, now. Apologize. They, uh, they make adjustments annually for that. But so now it uh, ca California has followed suit. So SB96 we're talking about here uh, went into effect September 14 of 2017. All right. And uh, already as of January, already this year, they've made another adjustment for the Consumer price index, consumer which, consumer price which index. Is, you know what? Who even knows what that is? We had to look that up, by the way, to understand so really what's basically who, who controls that. Yes, that's so it's basically a regulator of of, yes. of where inflation is going. So based on inflation, the prices go up every so year. So we're suggesting when the business does well and our economy grows, so does the prices of our OSHA citations I, now. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who thought that up, but uh, so but let's I, let's take a look at at what this looks like here in California. Uh, these tax guys, they love this tax stuff, Rick. So general regulatory yeah, yeah. violations. Uh, on, so we're talking on the maximum side. The maximum that a general violation used to be was seven thousand dollars. With the the initial increase, it went up to twelve thousand four hundred and seventy one dollars if they could cite you. And and, and they could. And the, depending on that, the the difference is just the attitude of the inspector and what they feel the uh, the the conditions or the attributes of the citation they're trying to build fall under. So they could stick at the seven, or they could go all the way up to the twelve thousand four hundred. It's a tough one. Yep. And then so now one they increase on the minimum side the minimum penalty for willfuls which used to be five thousand is now eight thousand nine hundred and eight uh, now the maximum again it's on the maximum side but willful violations wow from seventy thousand to one hundred and twenty four thousand seven oh nine michael there are people that get these and, and i'm telling you when it comes to these willful citations it is it is a rarity that we see them but You've got to be the employer that knows that if you get a willful violation, you're just doing something wrong out there. I mean, it, this citation is rare that we see them in the system, but they do come. They do, do come. A lot of the times we see these with press breaks. They're very difficult to guard. They're very deal to deal with. And after we settle the citation, we get abatement authorized on this and we move on. You get an employee with a rogue idea that de decides to pull off the guard or, or stop the, the activity of the lasers or whatever. So if you have something that you had problems with in the past and you've abated and you know that it's returned, I'm telling you, the serious willful violations are death to us. They're business killers, profit suckers. I don't care how you want to say it. Oh, it is yes. death to a business. Can I get another amen, gentlemen? Amen. Let me right. tell you, this is a tough one, especially when you're staring at $124,000, Big Rick. Oh, exactly. So the good news is, yeah. is that the uh, minimum and maximum penalties for serious violations didn't increase. Why? Because we were already more expensive oh, than the Fed's yeah. new prices to begin with. God bless them. Good night. We were already <laughs> so high, they didn't decide to hit them. So let me tell you, I, I, I think that is really one of those negatives that you, you just pray is a positive break it's a tough one exactly oh and uh wow the the one on uh that 
it remains the same, but still very expensive. Fifteen thousand dollars a day for failure to abate. Let me explain how this works. So when you get a citation and there is an abatement debts date set, and if you don't get the abatement paperwork in a certain amount of time, they throw your OSHA case into an expedited system. But if you surpass that date, OSHA has the ability to fine you. $15,000 per day until the penalty, until that abatement process has taken place. And that doesn't happen with us because we're always having our clients abate. Can I get an amen? amen? So the logic of it is abate your process, fix it up. Let's get this racked and loaded. Our people are coming to do these inspections out there. I've got Ray and Sam and Javier and a number of these guys out there. What you need to do is look at your reports and make a new commitment to start fixing these issues. Be a part of us when it comes to these inspections. Go out with your inspectors, ask questions of them, challenge them on these ideas. There's reasons to our madness. Since we're tracking everybody in the state of California and across the country, we know the trends that are being happening and how they're interpreting the laws. Trust us when I tell you that if we put it in the report, it's something you need to pay attention to. So I leave that word of wisdom with you, knowing that that's the problem that you're facing. All right. So... We'll get on to our final point here. This one hasn't quite taken effect yet, but we are talking about indoor heat illness prevention program. Another one that we saw coming, Michael. Yeah, it is, you the know, indoor heat. That, it, the outdoor heat's been in agriculture and construction for a while. Well, yeah, that started in 2006, but then we, we again had a webinar where we saw them apply that outdoor code to an indoor facility. They did. And we knew then for sure that soon enough they'd be coming out with one in California. Two things on this. The first, they applied it to a, a to a facility that wasn't 100% outside, but not 100% inside. It basically was on in the back of a shop where they had this incredibly large covering over a work area. Now, it was the employer thought of it as indoors because it was so massive. It was this big overhang, and it was attached to the building and came straight across. But it was considered outdoors, and then we knew it, and there's been a lot of talk, and this is going to rock this year. We really believe this indoor heat policy. And so all of the companies need this in indoor heat illness program. And once we get the actual code, we're going to tweak all of our manuals to make sure they, they reflect that and they put that into play. But through the last year, since they've had the outdoor one, there has been a number of companies we gave this to, and they may not have required it, but... The reality of it is we saw such vagueness sometimes in the way the district managers were implementing this and what we were being told. We thought it was the safest bet just to put that out because it was no harm, no foul. It wasn't right. like we were doing anything different besides doing some training, which we were already talking about. Exactly. And some of the provisions in there, such as shade and water, you, being already, had indoor, it you already had it. But it's, it was mostly a, a training issue, yes. watching your employees, making sure they stay hydrated and all of those things. Now, there's one more point I want to talk about when it comes to OSHA code that is specific to this one that really is interesting. A lot of times people will say, you know, I'm going to really know the OSHA code. I'm going to look at it and, and I'm going to research construction because I'm a construction guy and I'm going to comply with everything in construction. What they fail to understand is the, the trickiness at times of the Cal OSHA system. And they think to themselves, well, since I'm not an agricultural, that code doesn't apply to me. And I'm telling you, that's not necessarily how it works. There's something in the Kalosha system when you're defending that if there is a Kalosha code that reasonably should apply to you in another industry, that they can apply that code to you. This is why it's really, really vague between construction and agriculture. Yes, there's some different requirements you can keep to, but if there is a common sense rule over here that reasonably should be applied to over here, there is a practice where the judges allow them to be to be brought into a hearing on a district manager level and that they'll approve it. And you you can be cited for that. It is crazy to anybody that is just a normal thinker, but this is how it works. So this indoor heat illness, we've been planning for this for a while, but yes. it is going to come this year and it's going to be a doozy. It's actually due to be put together by January 1st of next year. They've got meetings coming up right. in, the, in the next couple of months. So yeah, we saw things that got signed. Uh, Governor Brown signed uh -huh. basically an act making it to where they had to get this program put together by next January. So we're just, even though it doesn't take effect now, just wanted to let you know that to get start getting prepared for that we'll do a webinar at the end of the year regarding the this, the details as we find them out regarding yes. this indoor heat but you need to start planning now and we will be too by making sure your people are getting heat illness trained even in your indoor circumstance when our people call you if you're using our on-site services i do recommend you ask somewhere around april as it starts to warm up in california or wherever you're at ask our people to put in one of those heat illness lessons so to make sure you got that we're going to be trying doing that already but if you 
you ask for it, we'll make sure we can get that into place for you so we can get the training and your people are already thinking about it before the law comes. So that pretty much is uh, the topics that we wanted to discuss with you today, yes. just to get you up to date with what's going on in the system. And uh... one of the things we'll just real quick, if for all those who have uh, joined us on this webinar that are not clients of ours or not using the on-site services, just know real quick, give us a call. We could do a free on-site workplace assessment, tell you a little bit about what we've got going on. If you are already a member of EEAP and Got Safety, please check out our Got Safety platform. This is going to save you lots of time. Our people can do free demos for you. Call in, please. If you're already a Got Safety client, you have those services at no extra charge. We'd love you to take advantage of those and take them. If uh, you're not a client, we'd love to help you in any way we can. So there you go, Rick. There you go. Rick, my favorite time to this give away a free smoker. This is favorite time. We're going to give away a smoker right here. My it is gosh. trivia question time. Woo. All right. Are you ready for the question, Michael? Rick, I, I wish we could just talk about smoked meat every day, but it just doesn't pay the bills, guys. Nobody pays that much money for smoked meat here at EAP or God's sake. All right, Rick, All what's right. the question of the day, Puck? The question is, on what basis is OSHA going to raise their fines annually? We talked about it a little earlier. has to do with inflation. I had to look it up on the Internet, like I said, I think, Rick. Yes. So we need to know on what basis. You need to call us at the 800 number, 734 Three five seven four. The first person to call with the correct answer wins that wonderful Davy Crockett. Oh my Michael. gosh, I love that smoker. Seven eight hundred seven three four three five seven four. Now this is the tough spot. Just sitting here waiting for somebody to call. It's the weirdest thing. As we're waiting, let me just say this: we got a question and answer period after the end of the thing. Sam is our director here. Sam, do we have questions coming in, sir? Oh, yes, we do, sir. Oh, he's got All questions right. for us. So please be patient. Somebody here has got to win a stick of smoker. Somebody's here. got to win the smoker. Ray, do I have anybody calling in for the smoker yet? Not yet. All right. Oh, this is sad. I'm actually depressed by this. This is. Oh, All right. All right. They're Hold answering on. calls. Thank goodness. It's the Somebody race is on. I can't be the only guy that wants smoked meat. So. All right. They're coming in hot. Hopefully, we got a winner here. Uh, Jason, oh, Jason's birthday. Well, April 30, he's a Taurus. He's a Taurus. So let me tell you, we're, we're, we're solid good people. You know what I mean? The, the deal is with the Taurus is we have the potential to really be aggressive, but we've got soft hearts. You know what I mean? Rick, what, what's your sign? I am a Taurus. Oh, are you? Yes. Oh, that's right. He's in your birthday, May 1st? Yes, from the day after he, you. Right. He's the day after. His wife and his two days apart. How can he even take that? That is amazing. Come on. Well, people are calling. Well, Hopefully calling. somebody's got the right answer. Ray, do you have a winner over there, Ray, for heaven's sakes? Uh, for heaven's oh, yeah. sakes, people. All right. I gotta, feel like got I got to give you a hint here. This is embarrassing. It has to do with the inflation. The what consumer. is the call? Consumer. Come on, people. At this point, I got to get on. Consumer. Come on. Somebody call. Oh, we got oh, a call great. here. Looks, looks like we may have a winner here. Hey, this is Michael Crowley. Who am I speaking to? Hello. This is Michael Crowley. Oh, no, I didn't. You're fine. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? We're looking for the greatest answer in the world. On what basis is an OSHA going to raise the fines annually? The consumer price index. Oh, yes. God bless you. All right. You have Ray. just won yourself a yes. smoker. Ray, gonna, come on over here, Ray. Grab, grab your phone. Ray. Yes, He's please. Gonna get your info so we can ship that out please, to you. Thank Ray. you. Ray, thank you very much. Praise. All right, that is awesome. Listen, we, we, we do love <laughs> vegans and tofu eaters, but uh, we do appreciate the did, good meat eating man. Did we better. show the price? Did we show the uh, the answer, Sam? They've got the answer. Okay, All right. Right here. Thank you guys for playing. Now, Sam, why don't you give us those questions so we can get back well, to work? Real quick, though, oh, well, just real quick, just wanted to let people know we have had an extremely busy 2017. Yes. We've got everyone migrated over to the Got Safety platform, and we've got some new things coming up for 2017. Oh. Just thought you might real quickly let them know what we're doing. So, so in 2017, we, we were trying to, we, we got this God Safety platform over, and it really is something amazing. If you've got signatures you're collecting and saving the old-fashioned way, I promise you, this new way is going to save you a lot of time. We've had a lot of issues when it comes to defense, asking for training records, and people just can't find them well. Please, the God Safety system, if you're already a member of the EAP team, I promise you this is not an upsell. It just comes along with it. I've grandfathered it into all my old clients, so let me tell you, I wanted you to have this benefit. So please, please use that. One of the things we also ran into was 
our video, our safety lessons were such a great thing when we turned into audio. We heard such great things that we have spent the time and money to put together an audio team, an video. audio visual, a video team. Thank you. And what we're doing is we're turning them all into video. Now, I have a couple of them, and I started this process in January of this year. So what we did is I've got the required lessons or our recommended lessons, the beginning ones, all done in there in English. And the Spanish are looking to come on in the next few weeks, and I'll have those videos in English and Spanish. But we're taking all of the safety lessons we have and putting a video with them so that they can watch it. You can watch the video. There's a lot more training that needs to take place at times. And these videos are ranging somewhere between 7 to 15 minutes, depending on how that lesson is. But you're going to love these lessons. We brought Ray from California all the way to Cedar City, Utah, where he is going to be the star of the majority of these videos at this point to really build our library up. So this is going to be bad. And I know it, Rick, but I need to tell you this. We're just going in order of what we think is most important when it comes to video. So <laughs> if you have a lesson that you really want to video, we ask you to put that in the email and tell your scheduler really about it so that we can start to understand what videos you want. And I'll work on those faster than those. And I'll put those in the priority of the list. So if you're wanting one of our lessons put to a safety video so that you can have that or training new hires or whatnot, send an email to your scheduler and uh, we'll move it up to the front of the list. We'll move it up to the front of the list. So and please. including if they need any custom lessons. Yes. We don't already have. Right. We'll be doing the videos on those and prioritizing those first. Correct. All right, Sam, hit us with some questions, buddy. My gosh. All right. In reference to the crystalline silica. Yes. Uh, how does this affect general industry when contractors come on site and work with these materials? All right. So when you've got a contractor that comes on site to work on these materials, the silica issues, uh, how this works is this. This could be considered a multi-employer work site where you are the controlling employer and they are the responsible employer. And so in that fashion, there could be some overlap that does take place. We don't see a lot of citations with this when you're talking about a factory that hires, let's say, a, a guy to pour a new slab of concrete out, but it's very possible that it could happen. I want to make that clear. Under the, the multi-employer work site in California, specifically, specifically, there, there is no vagueness that you have to be a general contractor to be the guy. You could just be another business hiring another business that creates that multi-employer workspace. So if you guys doing that, you're going to want to contact us around silica stuff or make sure the people you hire have a silica program and know what they're doing. Yes. Okay. This is from Trina Rodriguez. Uh, should N95 masks be used in an outpatient doctors, dental, and mental health offices? On the theory, it's that one's difficult to answer because I don't know the chemicals that you're using. And so when it comes to that kind of a thing, what you want to do is you want to look at the SDS sheets on all your chemicals. If there are no SDS sheets to tell you that you need to use those, then I would say no. A convenient dust mask will be, will be fine and get rid of the N95s. But if you do have a chemical there that requires it, and you'd only know that by yes. checking that, that would be the answer to the question. And John, we're okay, Sam, we're okay with just first names, bud. Okay, Alan. Alan asks if an employer, uh, if an employee has an unknown pre-existing condition, then that employee is involved in a traffic incident caused by that condition. Is this a recordable incident in the 300 blocks? Boy, that's a tough one. Now, what I'm not going to do is get into a circumstance like that, Alan, for this reason. It, 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 there, there are variations of that. What I would do is contact your workers' comp professional and talk to them about what are recordable and whatnot. My fear is basically this, that it becomes a workers' comp issue and you don't put that on the 300 log. OSHA finds out that it's not on the 300 log and but knows that your workers' comp thought it as a work-related injury. To me, the answer to the question would be basically this. If your workers' comp treats it as a work as a work uh, a work it's environment work problem, a work related problem, it's going on your 300 lot. So I always push that question off to the workers comp because you don't want the OSHA guy telling you if it's a recordable or not. You want the workers comp to tell you and right. we know how they're going to side. And, and I you're know just Alan, reporting what, what they tell you that you got to record it. Exactly. And, and we all know Alan doesn't want to hear that answer. Not because you're a bad person, Alan, because we were hoping for a better answer, but I know it's tough. I follow your workers comp lead on that so you don't get caught in the crossfire. Okay. Connor asks, you mentioned 300 logs need to be posted by punch clocks. We don't have a physical punch clock. 
Uh, where do you suggest we post this? Appreciate it, Connor. Uh, don't post it by the punch clock. You just got to put it in a conspicuous area. Rick picked the punch clock in the picture just to make sure. As an you example. Yeah, just, just but an don't example. worry about it. You could put this thing in the bathroom if everybody was using the bathroom. We really don't care where you put it. It has to be in a conspicuous place for your employees to see, brother. That's it. Great question. Darlene asks, is there any inclination when the code will come out for the indoor heat and illness prevention program? Like we yeah. said, later it's, this year. We'll yes. let you know more as we get there. They, they have to have it in place by January 1st of next year, but it could come in a little sooner. Yes. So we'll let you know. Anytime. We'll, we'll know at least a few months in advance and we'll notify. Okay. Um, Keith asks, when following OSHA table one for silica, if no respiratory protection for a certain task uh, is required, can you use can you use a N95 mask with a voluntary use form? I, I would stay away from the N95s unless you have a need for those and go to the convenient dust masks. I, I would not use one without that. There is a restriction of the airflow on those, and I don't know the medical condition of your employees. I would stick to the, the, the logic. If it's not required to have an N95, don't use an N95. If it's a voluntary program, then you shouldn't have a problem. Just use the dust, the regular dust masks. Don't try to get a better one by making it more. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Stay to the traditional dust masks if you're going to do voluntary. Steve asks, we are a multi-state employer with business in California and seven other states. What are we obligated to do now with the 2017 OSHA log data? 2016 log data was submitted for those states that required it. Right. So what you'll do is those states that require it, you're going to submit those electronically like they were. But the states that aren't required that we just read off, you're going to fill out the 300 log form. And every state has a different 300 log form. They call them the same thing, but they're a little different. Just go online. You'll be able to find that and take care of it. If you have a major question, you'll call our office and ask us for a little help on that. And my, and my team can run that down for you and help you find it. Okay. Uh, the N Angelina asks the N95 mask usage usage in general industry is voluntary usage as nuisance masks. Therefore, medical clearance is not needed. Correct. I'm telling you, if you use an N95 for voluntary or not, you should get you should get a clearance. Now, here's my point to this. It is the way the law is being interpreted that I'm saying that I'm leery of just saying openly, well, if it's voluntary in general industry, because of the logic that I said earlier about a code in one area can be typically used in another industry if it logically applies. That is a vagueness when it comes into the OSHA defense that you would never know unless you do tons of OSHA defense as we do. What I'm saying to you is this, if you have an area where people are using these masks voluntarily, that tells you that you don't have any serious problem out there and a traditional dust mask will be appropriate. But if you feel the need for an N95, my first question would be, why? What's so bad out there that you need the N95? Maybe we need to take a relook at your environment to make sure we don't truly need an N95. So a lot of us in the past just kind of used this voluntary program pretty vague and then gave them the N95, which we want to stay away from. You want to, if it's voluntary, we're saying there's nothing out there that's a problem, but if they feel a little freaky, they want to wear one, we'll let them. What we're saying is this, they want to wear it, it's going to be a traditional vest mask, not the N95. That would be what I would go with. And that's just based on citations that we've seen. Right. And, and, and years past, we, we hadn't seen it. But now that we've We're seen seeing it, things it, and, yeah. it's just not worth running the risk. Right. Okay. Will we be answering questions not directly related to the topics of today? I guess I can answer questions that are not related to the topic of the day. But if you have them, they're a little nutty. Give us a call. Please feel free. We will, we'll answer any question you want. Just call our, our number and we can answer any question that you want. Those are all the questions. Hey, thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. All right. Well, folks, that's uh, it looks like that's going to be a wrap for today. Join us next time uh, where we'll have some more interesting ocean news for you. And until then, uh, stay safe out there. Michael, any parting words? You know what, Rick? We're always looking for a good closing party line, but I just find myself falling short most of the time in this. just want to say thank you. If we can help you, let us know. Please stay safe, like Rick said. And if you have questions, please, my team is here here to help you out. Please take a look at the God Safety app. It's, it's really at no charge to you if you're already a client on-site surfaces, and you're going to love it to death. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time.